Isolated and alone, below the southeastern tip of Australia, is an island unlike any other. A land of stunning coastlines, of ancient forests, of rugged mountains, and pristine streams. Battered by the mighty Southern Ocean, with the cleanest air on Earth and plant life that has survived since the time of Gondwana. It is a land where trees grow to gigantic heights, where mammals rule the seas and marsupials dwell in the undergrowth. Enigmatic, majestic and wild. This is the island of Tasmania. Tasmania is unlike any other part of Australia. Separated from the mainland at the end of the last ice age, its plants and animals have lived in isolation for more than 12,000 years. Tasmania is an immense wilderness surrounded by vast oceans. Its climate is heavily influenced by its position in the Southern Ocean, directly in the path of the notorious Roaring Forties. This wild prevailing weather system splits the island into two distinct climatic zones. Its west experiences wild seas, strong winds and heavy rainfall. The east is generally drier and calmer. Tasmania's climate is much cooler than the rest of Australia. Tasmania's northeastern coastlines are some of its most picturesque. The rocky headlands around this coast are comprised of granite, a volcanic rock similar to those found on the Australian mainland. Formed deep beneath the earth 400 million years ago, granite contains high levels of quartzite. As it weathers, it creates the pure white sands found on these beaches. The orange hue on the rocky shoreline is the presence of a microscopic lichen. Lichens are a form of fungus that coexists with an algae a symbiosis that benefits both organisms. The fungi provide a protective structure for the algae. In return, the algae provides a source of food to the fungi. Individually, neither would survive. But on this rocky coastline, they thrive. as do shorebirds. Tasmania's northeast is a haven for many species of shorebirds. This pied oyster catcher searches for buried mollusks and worms. 
silver gulls churn the sands with their feet in search of invertebrates. Twice a year, these shores are visited by migratory giants, humpback whales, This mother is returning from the subtropical waters of Queensland with her newborn calf. Once thought to have fasted for the entire duration of their annual migration, new research has discovered that humpbacks stop to re-energize in the waters off Tasmania. Here, they will feed on krill before returning to their main feeding grounds in the Southern Ocean. As their journey takes them further south, White sandy beaches give way to some of Tasmania's most spectacular coastal formations. The sea cliffs of the Tasman Peninsula rise 300 meters above the ocean. These are the tallest sea cliffs in the southern hemisphere. Comprised of dolerite, a volcanic rock formed when magma is pushed vertically into sedimentary layers of the Earth's crust. Dolerite underlies much of the island of Tasmania, giving form to many of its distinctive peaks and offshore islands. These islands southwest of the Tasman Peninsula are haulouts for Australian fur seals. When not feeding, Fur seals come to land to rest and avoid predators. This is one of about 50 sites in southern Tasmania where fur seals break from hunting. There are around two and a half thousand Australian fur seals in Tasmania's southern waters. Hunted to near extinction in the 1800s, today their numbers have rebounded to about half of pre-sealing times. Fast and agile in the water, they can dive to depths of 200 meters. With sharp eyesight, they can see well in the dark, but also use their thick whiskers to sense vibrations when hunting. Unlike other seals, fur seals have visible external ears and the ability to use all four limbs to move about. Alpha males can weigh up to a hundred kilograms. In addition to fish, they feed on squid, octopus and lobsters. These islands mark the geographic boundary between the Tasman Sea and the mighty Southern Ocean. This is the most southerly bay on the main island of Tasmania. 
Here, the southern ocean's fury meets the Tasmanian coast. Dominated by the notorious Roaring Forties, cold airstreams from the Antarctic create some of the fiercest waves on the planet. With no landfall for thousands of kilometers, waves travel unabated until they reach this coast. The air passing these shores is some of the cleanest on Earth. The Southern Ocean's strong winds capture massive quantities of moisture. As these winds hit the coast, they are driven up over the mountain ranges, forming rain clouds that drench Tasmania's west. Much of this rain falls over Tasmania's southwest wilderness. With its extensive mountains, steep valleys, deep mountain lakes, and sprawling moorlands, this is Tasmania's most wild and inaccessible region. Out here, rainfall occurs more often than anywhere else in Australia. Some areas receive three meters a year, as much as Australia's tropical rainforests. And all this rainfall feeds an extensive collection of streams and waterfalls. Tasmania's west is home to the largest expanse of temperate rainforests in Australia. Covering 10% of Tasmania's landmass, they extend from sea level to subalpine elevations. Unlike tropical rainforests, Tasmania's forests are cool and often silent. The forest floor and tree trunks are carpeted with mosses and lichens. More than 250 species have been recorded here. These forests were once home to the now extinct thylacine. Today, animal inhabitants are reclusive and include, among others, Tasmanian devils and padamelons. Padamelons are marsupials that belong to the same family as the kangaroos and wallabies. But instead of inhabiting the grasslands, padamelons have adapted to Tasmania's dense rainforests and shrublands. They are easily differentiated by their smaller size and shorter, thicker tails. They have rounded ears, giving them a mouse-like appearance. Their diet is based on leaves, ferns, mosses, and lichens. Padamelons are solitary creatures. The one exception is mothers with dependent young. Joeys spend about six months in their mother's pouch. Once leaving, they remain with their mother for around two months before becoming independent. Padamelons reach maturity at 18 months and will typically live to between four and eight years. Another feature of western and central Tasmania is its extensive button grass moorlands. Button grass is a hummock forming plant that thrives in nutrient poor soils. When dry, it is highly flammable but has adapted to recover quickly. Fire clears out less adapted species, leading to the gradual expansion of these open landscapes. Tasmania has over a million hectares of button grass moorlands. Over time, 
extensive masses of peat are formed below button grass fields. As peat decays, it releases tannin, a compound found in tea and red wine, which colors the water in adjacent streams. Here, in Tasmania's high country, wombats inhabit open patches of grassland where they will feed almost exclusively on grass and roots. Wombats have the distinction of being the world's largest burrowing animal. They are nocturnal, emerging at dusk to feed. Wombats are surprisingly fast runners to evade predators, they can run at speeds of up to 40 kilometers an hour, as fast as an Olympic sprinter. Despite having the largest brain of all the marsupials, they have poor eyesight, but compensate with extremely good hearing. Wombats can dig up to a dozen burrows in their home range. They will reside in a few and use others to harbor from predators. Tasmania's mountains are concentrated in the western half of the island. North to south, they extend almost the entire length of Tasmania. The alpine region is dominated by rocky peaks, boggy marshes and mountain top lakes. Low soil nutrients, freezing temperatures, high winds and the prevalence of snow make survival difficult here. Plants that grow here tend to be conifers and small shrubs. Species like the Nothophagus, also known as the deciduous beech, are found at these altitudes. This is Australia's only deciduous tree. Its ancestry has been dated back to a time when the Australian continent was joined to the giant supercontinent Gondwana. The wet, rocky soils around this lake are home to another remnant of this time the Tasmanian pencil pine. As with most alpine plants, they are slow growing. In the absence of fire, some pencil pines can live for more than a thousand years. Amongst the boulder scree exist small creatures like these flightless talus grasshoppers. Lack of flight is an adaption that prevents them being blown away in the strong alpine winds. A northern snow skink emerges from its rocky shelter. Found only in Tasmanian alpine areas, its dark color allows it to maximize absorption of solar heat. Bennett's wallabies, a subspecies of the mainland red-necked wallaby, are common throughout Tasmania. Bennett's wallabies are smaller, shaggier, and darker than their mainland counterparts. They journey into the high country during the summer months to feed on new growth. 
usually more active at dawn and dusk, up here they feed during the daylight hours. Tasmanian snow gentians are small alpine herbs that flower only once in their lifetime. Cushion plants have adapted to these conditions by developing a densely crowded form. This structure protects and insulates against the extremes of the alpine climate. Alpine weather conditions can change rapidly. Even in summer, cold air masses originating from as far away as Antarctica can lead to sudden snowfalls and whiteouts. These are Tasmania's old growth forests. And in these forests, we encounter the largest eucalypts on earth. This is the mountain ash, the world's tallest flowering plant, growing to heights of 100 meters. The oldest of this species can live to 500 years. Mountain ash forests are the most carbon dense forests on Earth. Storing more than 2,000 tons of carbon per hectare, they are many times more carbon dense than tropical rainforests. As mountain ash reach maturity, they are no longer able to support the heavy weight of wood and leaves so high from the ground and begin to die from the top down. This phase of life creates nesting hollows for species like this yellow-tailed black cockatoo. At the feet of these giants exists a kingdom of life critical for the forest's own survival. The forest floor is the realm of fungi. The visible part of fungi is merely its fruiting body. Its function is to disperse dust-like spores into the air to grow elsewhere. But below this fruiting body exists a much larger root-like structure called the mycelium. Through the mycelium, fungi decompose dead organic materials, converting them to readily usable forms. Without fungi, these rainforests would simply not survive. Fungi have developed a variety of ingenious ways to disperse their spores this is the fruiting body of the starfish fungus. Its arms are coated with a sticky brown slime containing its spores. The slime smells of rotting flesh, which attracts flies. The slimy spores stick to the fly's feet and in turn are dispersed elsewhere.
Tasmania is an island surrounded by its own islands. Including all its islets and rocky stacks, it has over 5,000 of them. Bruni Island is its fourth largest and contains its own unique wonders. Bruni Island is two separate land masses connected by a narrow strip of land. Comprised of sand, at its narrowest point, it is less than a hundred meters wide. South Bruni Island is flanked by towering sea cliffs. Black-faced cormorants fish these waters, as do this small colony of New Zealand fur seals. Hidden caverns below the cliffs form blowholes on the rising tide. On Bruni Island's grasslands is one of the world's rarest geese, the Cape Barren Goose. In the 1950s, they were hunted to near extinction. Their habitat includes the islands of Tasmania and the southern tips of South Australia and Victoria. Forming pairs for life, when nesting, they become fiercely territorial. They spend much of their day grazing on a wide variety of grasses, shoots and leaves. Bruni Island is home to a rare population of white wallabies. White wallabies are Bennett's wallabies with a rare genetic mutation that has given them white fur. Anywhere else and their lack of camouflage would have made them easy pickings as prey. But on this island, with a lack of predators, their population has grown. It is estimated there are now around 200 white wallabies on Bruni Island. The white wallaby, like so many of Tasmania's unique plants and animals, has prospered from their isolation on this island wilderness. But Tasmania's isolation does not protect it from the threats created by the rise of humankind. Since European settlement, 41 species of plants and animals have become extinct in Tasmania. Today, another 600 are classified as being under threat. Human interventions in the last century include designation of more than 40% of Tasmania as national parks and conservation reserves. Large expanses of Tasmania are also recognized and protected internationally for their world heritage values. But these interventions alone will not protect Tasmania from the greater threats of a changing global climate. Indeed, the future of this island wilderness and all its unique inhabitants is in our hands.